Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, we were talking about symmetry in three-dimensional space, basically two kinds of symmetry. Um, one is central symmetry, which is symmetry relative to a point, and another was a reflection, which is symmetry relative to a plane. Now, what's important about symmetrical figures, just in general? Well, they look alike. Um, so, this lecture, which is a very, very short one and actually trivial, um, is about what exactly is uh, look-alike in, in the symmetrical figures. Well, obviously we all know that symmetrical figures are almost equal. I mean, they are either completely um, equal in the terms of you can just put one on the top of another and they will coincide or they are, so to speak, symmetrical, like two different hands, when you have to really like turn something around, and then they will coincide. So basically that's what I'm going to prove right now, that in any kind of symmetry which we were talking about, um, we have this uh, property of uh, likeness. And in mathematical terms, it's called congruence. Well, in my young uh, days it was it was called basically quality um, nowadays it's more customary to use the term congruence uh, so two figures are congruent rather than equal primarily because it's like two hands they're not really equal but they are congruent because you can do something like this um, all right so um, a few mini th mini theorems about uh, congruence and symmetry. So um, I have a few different kinds of um, uh, proofs in this particular case. Um, they're all about symmetrical um, objects and they're all very very simple. So let's just start with something simple. The simplest actually. You have a central symmetry relative to a point and you have a segment. So you reflect this segment, and we know that the reflection, uh, well, I should say symmetry relative to a point of a straight line is a straight line. So a segment is transformed into a segment. So these are equal, and these two are equal. These angles are obviously vertical. Now, the thing is going on in three-dimensional space. However, if we are talking about a segment and a point, it's three points, actually, two, par two, two, two uh, intersecting lines. So everything can be considered as happening in the plane, which contains A, B, A prime, B prime, and, uh, and uh, the center of symmetry. That's called P. So, in plane geometry, it's absolutely obvious that these two triangles uh, are congruent because it's side angle side, uh, side angle side. So that's the end of the proof. <laughs> Very simple, right? So segments are, um, symmetrical segments are equal in lengths, basically. And as far as their position um, in the central symmetrical case, they are also parallel. So that's my first theorem. So the central symmetry preserves the segment lengths. Okay, great. How about a symmetry relatively to a plane? So let's say we have a reflection relative to a plane. And let me draw a plane something like this. This is my plane of reflection. So I drop a perpendicular from A onto this plane and extend it by the same lengths, drop a perpendicular to B, from B to the plane, and this is my, and this is my image, and this is the result. Now, these are two perpendiculars to the same plane, they are parallel, which means they lie in the same plane. So again, I can consider the whole thing as happening in the plane, which contains A, B, B prime, and A prime. 
and incidentally two bases of perpendiculars if you wish and now what we are talking about is a plane geometry uh, theorem where I can just wipe out my plane of reflection as if I don't have it and I can consider the plane uh, problem which basically states that by the way these are perpendiculars because this is a perpendicular to the whole plane right so these are perpendiculars and these are equal to each other by construction these are equal to each other by construction and all I have to prove that a b is equal to a prime b prime which is again a trivial task I mean how can we do it well for instance we can drop perpendiculars here and here uh, which means now this is a rectangle so this is equal to this and this piece is a difference between this and this and it's exactly the same thing here and uh, these are also equal to each other because these are uh, equal to this one so we have two uh, right triangles with two casualty uh, correspondingly equal to each other so obviously the symmetry relative to a plane the reflection um, relative to a plane also preserves the lengths of the segment all right two down next we will have a little bit more complicated but not by much case instead of a segment we will um, use this transformation of symmetry with triangles so let's say we have a triangle a b c and let's say central symmetry p so we go with b to here with c to here and with a uh, to here something like this too much i guess oh, no that's not too much yeah i think it's okay this is a prime b prime and C prime. So A B C goes into A prime B prime C prime. Now these are equal. This is equal to this, and A P is equal to P A prime. Now, why are these triangles congruent? Well, because every triangle has three sides. Every side is a segment, and we know that this segment is equal to this segment, this to this, and this to this because of the previous theorem about segments. So these two triangles are um, congruent by three sides. That's it. Now, the next theorem would be in exactly the same fashion proved about reflection of the triangle. So if you have a triangle ABC and the plane of reflection and we reflect reflected, reflected here we will also have a congruent triangle because of three sides each side is a segment so side is equal to side and we have congruent triangles Next, so we have fourth down. Next two will be about angles. Now, what I'm staging right now that angles are also preserved by the symmetry. So if you have an angle, which is actually like two rays, and you have a center of symmetry. Now this ray is reflected into this one, and this is the vertex and this ray is reflected into this one so if this is a this is a prime now this is line B this is line C this is line B prime this is C prime so why angles are the same well there are a couple of ways i can prove it well first of all 
we have already proven that lines are parallel in the central symmetry. So in this particular case, we have two different angles with correspondingly parallel sides. So that's one thing. Another is, I can just choose a couple of points here and here, have their symmetrical counterparts, and consider a triangle. Now, since triangles are preserved, the angles are el also preserved. So this angle is equal to this angle. Now, this last approach with the triangle, I will use for um, reflection for symmetry relative to a plane. Um, so instead of this picture, I have, again, an angle and some kind of a plane. And I have a reflection of this angle, which is probably something like this. Now, it's all in three-dimensional space, right? So, again, what I will do, I will choose two points and make it a triangle. And this is my image triangle. And since triangles are congruent, the corresponding angles are congruent as well. Slightly more difficult is the last couple, which I would like to, um, uh, to, to prove. This is more three-dimensional case. So let's consider we have a, a dihedral angle, which means an angle between two half planes, right? So you have some kind of a border. This is one. And how can I put it? Well, let me just do it slightly different. I will use this one. So this is one plane, and this is another plane. This is my dihedral angle. Now, somewhere I have a plane relative to which I reflect this. Oh no, first is central symmetry, sorry. So I have a point, a point. Now, let's just think. We know that image of a plane is a plane, image of a line is a line. Plane would be parallel, by the way, and line would be parallel. So in this particular case, this line would be reflected into this, this plane would be reflected into, I guess, uh, no, not this one, into this, and this one into this, something like this, right? So this is alpha, this is beta, this is beta, this is alpha prime, and this point is in between center of symmetry. Okay, now how can I prove that these dihedral angles are the same? Well, here is what I can do in this particular case. Well, number one, obviously I can refer to the parallelism. So you have two planes, um, uh, two dihedral angles with correspondingly parallel planes. I can actually derive from this the equality of the dihedral angles. But probably I would choose something else, um, because I would like to use the same um, uh, proof for reflection, where I will not have this parallelism. So here's what I will do. I will choose a point, and obviously it's image here. Now, in one plane I will do the perpendicular to, um, uh, to the edge and in another. So these lines are perpendicular to the edge, this line within beta and this line within, uh, within alpha. Now, the flat angle between these two lines is actually a measure of the dihedral angle, right? Now, same thing here, perpendicular to this, perpendicular to this. Now, we know that plane angles are always preserved. So the image of this right angle is this right angle, because it must belong to the plane, right? So the angles must be equal, since it's just flat, flat angles. So these 
this angle and, and, and this angle must be the same since they are image of each other same thing with this one also should be uh, 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 the right angle right so they are also uh, right angles here and there now what I can do I can use the triangle thing if you want to um, something like put a couple of points here find their images here so triangles are preserved so all in all what I'm saying is that all these elements all these three points will be um, uh, symmetrically um, transformed into these three points and everything about these three points is supposed to be the same including the angle between these two which is a measure of the um, of the dihedral angle right so let's do it again so I have this edge I have the point here and its image a couple of perpendiculars here and there here and there and since angles are preserved I can say that this angle between this line and this is the same as this one and this and then just again two points and have, have triangles and equality of the triangles now I can use exactly the same approach to uh, to have symmetry relative to a plane so if I have some kind of a plane which is symmetrical and now I have this something like this so that would be my A that would be my I alpha and, and beta same thing so first so this alpha goes to alpha uh, prime so this perpendicular should go to this perpendicular this perpendicular to this and now I can choose a couple of points and the equality of the triangles will give me equality of the dihedral angles exactly the same thing so um, I was trying to prove that basically all the elementary objects uh, of 3D geometry like segments, angles, dihedral angles they are preserved now as a consequence you probably can think about that any complicated geometrical object if symmetrically transformed whether it's centrally symmetrical or um, reflection relative to the plane it should produce um, something similar well congruent actually to the original now why um, the reason is very simple any complicated geometric uh, object can be subdivided into more elementary pieces so all elementary pieces we have basically covered like for instance we have covered triangle but we did not cover let's say uh, pentagon but hey pentagon can be divided into triangles right and therefore the corresponding pieces of the corresponding pentagon will also be um, I I I congruent piece by piece and therefore the whole pentagon will be congruent now if I have um, uh, proven that uh, dihedral angles for instance are the same and all faces are basically the same congruent in the symmetrical figure then that actually means that the whole geometric figure however complex it is would be um, properly um, uh, reflected properly means congruently reflected into its image whether it's a central symmetry or uh, plane symmetry well that was a relatively short and relatively trivial subject of this lecture um, I would suggest you to read all these proofs in the notes on the unizor.com. I think it's very helpful. Well, other than that, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>